Now we're ready to move to the back side of the worksheet. And you'll notice a couple of things right away. First of all, there, there's no grids shown on here. So we're not going to be graphically representing our vectors. We're just going to do some math with our vectors. The other thing you'll notice pretty quickly is if you start looking at these, I don't have integers anymore. See, vectors don't have to be integers. We used integers when we were working with the grids because it's easy to count out three boxes and two boxes. It's a little bit harder to count out 2.5 boxes or 1.7 boxes. But in physics, the type of things that we're going to represent with vectors aren't necessarily integers. So we do need to know how to work with these things, even if they're not integers. We're going to take this one step at a time, though. So we're going to start with this first one, an a plus b vector again. And I've got 3.0 i hat plus 2.5 j hat minus 1.7 i hat minus 3.2 j hat. If I use the same sort of lining them up as columns as I did on the last one, it looks something like this. 3.0 i hat plus 2.5 j hat minus 1.7 i hat minus 3.2 j hat. And we take care of the i's together, so we've got 3 minus 1.7. Now notice, I'm not subtracting vector b. Vector b just has negative components. And so when I do that, adding a negative number to a positive number, I get 1.3 i hat for the j, for the i, excuse me, and minus 0 0.7 for the j. Now, it's probably easier for you to write this out in this column format. And certainly, that's perfectly acceptable. But I want to show you one other way you might see it. Now, just so I've got some room, I'm going to temporarily delete this. You don't need to delete what's on your paper. I'm going to grab another way of representing this and then walk you through what it says. So I take my a vector here, the full a vector, put it in parentheses, plus my b vector, and I put my full b vector. Now just like in algebra, if you had 3a and 4a, you'd regroup them together. We're going to regroup the i's together, and we're going to regroup the j's together. So I've got 3.0 minus 1.7 for the i and 2.5 minus 3.2 for the j. And then when I simplify it, I get the exact same answer I had before. So it's often easier for students to see them if they stack them up in columns. But you can also write it out as one long line. You just have to keep track of the fact that you've got both i's and j's. And you have to group the i's when you add them and group the j's. So just as a, a comparison here, you could have both methods on your sheet, or you could just have one or the other of these methods on your sheet.